Hi, I'm Dr. Jonathan Singer. I'm here for the Glenbard Parent Series. And there are a couple of things that I'd like to talk to you about, parent to parent, adult to adult, things to keep in mind when you have a suicidal kid. Number one, make your kids sleep. We have found that sleep deprivation wreaks all sorts of havoc on the adolescent brain. So if you have a kid that is sad, moody, anxious, one of the best things you can do is to ensure that they're sleeping. Sometimes this looks like making sure that they keep their uh, electronic devices out of their room. Sometimes it looks like having calming activities at night. Sometimes it looks like making sure that you're having a check-in about what's gonna be happening the next day. But it's essential to make your kids sleep. The second thing is to talk with your teen. Now, there's an old saying that says the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, and the second best time is right now. So if you've been talking with your teen their whole life, that's great. I suspect it's probably gotten a little bit more difficult in recent years, but don't give up. Teens have every right to be able to go to their parents when they're sad or suicidal, and this is something that you need to make sure that they know that they have the right to come to you, they deserve to come to you, and that you will be there for them. The third thing is to model mental health treatment. If you're expecting your kid to go see a therapist and they see you with anger issues or difficulty sleeping or lots of conflict, if they see you having the same issues that you're talking to them about and that you're saying you need to go see a therapist about, if you're not taking care of your mental health, uh, if you're not taking care of your mental health, they're not gonna want to take care of their mental health. So model self-care and good mental health treatment. The fourth thing is to want the best for your child, not for your child to be the best. This is a really challenging thing for parents to keep in mind, especially if you get closer and closer to the time where your kids have to think about college, or if they're not going to college, getting the best job that they can. It's really important to focus on wanting the best for your kid because every kid is different. And what the best is can't necessarily be determined by some of the things that we think of, the benchmarks that we think of in terms of 4.0 GPA, top marks on the SAT, all those sorts of things. So want the best for your kid, not for your kid to be the best. And the last thing that I wanna share with you is when it comes to schools, Make sure that you and your teachers are a team, as opposed to you and your kid against the teachers. If we're asking teachers to look out for our kids, if we're saying, I want you to focus not only on their educational well-being, but their emotional well-being, when they come to us and they say, hey, something's going on, if we defend our kids and we don't listen to what the teacher has to say, then we've just set up the teacher to fail. And we've probably set up our kid to fail too. So think of you and your kid's teachers as a team for the betterment of your kid. Thanks so much for listening. I hope some of this has been helpful.